Movement is an essential part of the gaming experience. In fact, it's a key way for developers to connect and immerse players into the game that they're actually trying to create. So, movement or traversal is generally described of how you get from point A all the way to point B. Unfortunately though, in most cases, this part of the equation of the open world template is often neglected or even seen as unimportant or most likely an afterthought. The problem with doing this is that open world travel and traversing the open world ends up being a boring and uninspiring experience. Whether you slowly trot or run to your next location, we're only going to have fun once we get there. So in this video, we're going to discuss some games that fix this very issue. And I'm sure by the end of the video you'll notice a few patterns with these particularly mentioned games that have great and amazing movement. So firstly we're going to start off with the PlayStation exclusive from Sucker Punch, Infamous. A franchise that maybe many of you have forgotten, but it's still a great template to integrate a good traversal system into your game. And this was done from the very first entry, using your electrical abilities to float and grind on power lines and train tracks was definitely a whole lot of fun. You had a whole lot of a good time during your journey, not just at your destination. The movement was definitely improved in the second game as well, you did get a few new powers in Infamous 2 such as the grapple, but that wasn't actually the key thing that improved the movement in the sequel it was actually the map. This time around, New Marais was intentionally built with exciting traversal in mind. There are power lines absolutely everywhere, and with added tram tracks on pretty much every single road, you are going to be flying to your next location at an exhilarating pace. Infamous Second Sun and Infamous First Light, the standalone DLC for that game, ramp up this great and exciting traversal system with absolutely brand new height with the integration of some brand new conduit powers. Smoke in Second Sun works very similarly to electricity, but no grinding this time around but they add the ability to shoot up a chimney which is extremely satisfying. The neon power is great, so if you're somebody who's ever wanted a flash game, this is probably the closest you'll ever get. The standalone DLC expansion for this light ramps up the speed of neon to absolutely high levels. I had a huge amount of fun traversing in that game. Then in Second Sun, the movement is ramped to the absolute max with the video power that allows Delsing to glide and essentially fly around for a little bit at extremely high speeds. The Sucker Punch need to be commended on their great upward progression to how they handled movement, ensuring to make sure that their movement improves in every single subsequent release. Just Cause. I personally played Just Cause 2 the most over on my older PC and had a great time traversing that world. Having a jetpack, a parachute, a grapple hook all mixed together into your traversal toolbox, you are destined to have a great time moving from point A to point B, without question. The Just Cause is a game that shows that sacrificing realism for fun is a worthy sacrifice. While this may not work tonally in some games, I think this is definitely a sacrifice worth making. Making a game more realistic doesn't necessarily make it better in any way in both graphics and mechanics. Far Cry also has enjoyable movement too, but in this video I'll focus on Far Cry 5. I would definitely recommend you don't sleep on this movement system. Now, you may think to yourself, well dude, Far Cry is just another typical open world game where it's boring to move from point A to point B. Whatever do you mean? While in recent times Ubisoft has definitely dropped the ball, when they started getting the system into motion, they did something very well and very unique with the way in which you played Far Cry. By this I mean camera orientation. When you hop into a vehicle, simply driving around is very very cool because Far Cry puts you into a unique first person driving experience. So when you're driving, action scenes and crashes are a lot more exciting as you deal with the attackers that aim to take your life. With the addition of gliders as well, covering far distances becomes something you look forward to instead of dreading. This game laid the foundations for traversal games in every single superhero game to come. Batman Arkham City. Now Arkham Asylum did actually lay the foundations, but huh, Arkham City was the game that was properly able to realize this game's traversal system 
to its full potential. As Batman, you can glide all over the map using your very cool and multi-purpose cape and your very cool grapnel hook. If you complete a side quest within Arkham City, you can get a grapnel boost that will make traversing all around the map of Arkham City a great experience. Arkham Knight takes this very same concept and dials it to 11. With an extended grapnel boost for an even bigger map of Gotham City, only possible using the PS4 and Xbox One at the time, I had sessions where I would just hop onto Arkham Knight and just fly around and also drive the very cool Batmobile. That game is definitely a master at traversal by even giving us variety of even using something like the Batmobile if we even got tired on the gliding. Now Dying Light also has phenomenal movement as well. While it could be definitely compared to Assassin's Creed parkour, they give it a unique twist. By making the game entirely first person, it gives you a completely brand new experience to the parkour. Techland really pulled the rabbit out of the hat and created a really strong parkour system that makes this game very memorable even though it was released during a very oversaturated period of zombie games. I've yet to complete Dying Light 1 or complete or get started on Dying Light 2, but from looking at the footage it seems that the movement is ramped up to a brand new level. Spider-Man Clearly with a little bit of inspiration from the great Spider-Man 2 from the PlayStation 2 and taking some components from Sunset Overdrive, Spider-Man gave us the best swinging ever. And not just in the category of swinging, they possibly gave us the greatest traversal and movement system of all time. It made fast travel almost redundant. Why teleport to your next location when it's so much fun to swing around New York City? By essentially adding Batman's gliding kit to the game, huh, you will essentially have no moment in the game where you're flying around the map where you won't have control or feel that you're stuck in any way because there isn't a tree or a building near you. With gliding, you have complete freedom and you can pretty much choose if you want to swing or whether you want to glide because they're both so well implemented. Now, the gliding is less powerful as compared to the Batman games, but it is competent and if there's pretty much nothing around you, you can still have a modicum of control of where your character is going. Now, I thank you so much for making it this far into the video. Now, the question I want to ask you is, did you notice a pattern in these games? Many, if not all, are superhero games. In order to achieve a great traversal system, realism on most occasions has to be sacrificed. I think this is a worthy sacrifice and I think this can be done even in a generally realistic type of game. While having a hang glider in Red Dead Redemption 2 would be very quite odd, maybe implement something else that is time sensitive such as a hot air balloon. Adding something of that nature could be really, really interesting. I'm just spitballing over here and trying to come with ideas because unfortunately I've had really bad experiences where the traversal has put me off a number of games. I immediately think of Assassin's Creed Odyssey where I was thoroughly annoyed to see that my next destination was 5,000 meters away because I knew that I'd be bored getting to that destination. Sailing on your ship can sometimes be interesting or intriguing, but that definitely gets old after about 5 or 10 hours. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please let me know down in the comments. I can also make up another list of some games that have a poor traversal system. Thank you for joining me for another video. My name is Explicit Sage. More gaming and anime analysis is coming your way. Take it easy.